are watching Super TV and Open View Channel 150. Well, welcome back to Mo Sports. I'm Obi Knows holding it down for Mo. If you are wondering, maybe just tuned into your uh, television set and you see me on the screen and the me actually introducing the show, then uh, you're kind of confused. But uh, yeah, you must know that Mo will be back uh, in a few more days. Don't worry about it. But uh, for now, though, I am driving you away and making sure that you know all that you need to know in terms of football and what's going on in the world of football and uh, we just wrapped up in the first segment if you did miss it we spoke about the PSL and the PSL awards all the players who picked up awards last night in the PSL we also had a, a brief chat about who I thought should have done a lot better in the PSL in terms of uh, where they finished and in terms of the performances they gave throughout the season and uh, for now though we've got an interview with um, the Daily Sun sports editor and this is Mr. Matthews Mbete Mr. Matthews, thank you very much for joining us once again here on More Sports. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation. All right, thanks. Uh, let's jump into the PSL. Let's just, just get straight into the conversation. Yeah? Uh, we're going to talk about this Mamelodi Sundown situation. Um, they recently just won uh, the league title. They lift uh, their league uh, title in the last day of the season. And uh, subsequent to that, uh, we hear the sad news of the passing of a former employee at Mamelodi Sundowns, a former spokesperson, rather a, a media uh, liaison at Mamelodi Sundowns. How much do you know of uh, this individual I'm talking about, Mr. Better? Yeah, very interesting. And uh, I think I should also use this platform to uh, pass my condolences to the family of uh, Chulani Tusa because uh, I've worked very closely with him, you know, for many years. Even before he joined uh, Mamelodi Sundowns, I was still, uh, you know, in contact with him. And when he joined Sundowns, then we can get this uh, bond uh, together and uh, he was one of those guys who would, uh, you know, be, uh, uh, I mean, we know him as a public person and in most cases I think he was uh, too much, uh, you know, into his work in my mind sometimes, but more importantly, he was uh, more into fans because, uh, I mean, uh, myself and him, we used to run a lot of competitions. Whatever he had at Sundowns, it might be tickets, it might be, uh, you know, whatever that is there, you know, like uh, sweet tickets uh, for the supporters, yeah. then he would do it and he wouldn't mind even traveling across the, uh, you know, uh, province, you know, to deliver those tickets. And in most cases, then he would even, you know, bother me and say, I must come to the stadium, I must come to the suit. <laughs> then I would tell him that, you know what, I would be working. Um, uh, normally, I would be in the uh, press box. But now they want me in the sweets, and I don't, uh, I'm not a sweet You don't person. like the sweets. <laughs> no, 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 I don't like the sweets. And uh, I mean, just recently, you know, when he was working under this, uh, uh, the new company that he was working for, the PR company, I mean, he was also getting in touch. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a lot of uh, work. And uh, the last I spoke to him was on Friday, surprisingly, mm -hmm. you know, we were chatting about, uh, you know, the developments in uh, Bitong Simani's. Uh, you know, squabbles with the uh, Mamluk Sundowns yeah. as well as, uh, you know, Vito's wife mm. and all those things. Then, uh, because he was working closely with Vito, so he was uh, sort of trying to calm down the situation. You know, he was uh, that kind of a person. Hey, we, will, we will get into talks about that Vito Musimani situation a bit later on in our conversation because it's one that I really want our viewers to be very well aware of. But uh, let's talk more about, you know, Mamluk Sundowns. I mean, uh, we're talking about Peter Shalunile here. A player who we all feel you know gave a brilliant performance uh, throughout the season very consistent picking up two awards uh, last night do you think it was uh, well deserved uh, for the namibian international look i think uh, the, 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 there's no question about it i think uh, um, peter deserved uh, everything because i mean if you count on how many uh, men of the match awards that he's received i think he's received plenty and uh you know the monthly awards it is plenty um and now the may and june as well you know he won something as well so definitely um he was uh one of those players i mean he contributed 15 goals from every sundowns and he had about uh seven assists so it tells you something about the village I mean, he was not selfish and uh he played uh, all the uh, 19 minutes i think if i'm not mistaken if i were to be a statistician i think he played for about 2161 minutes you know and throughout the season uh, and uh, he's uh, one of those uh, players who is not, uh, you know, selfish. He would uh, set up, you know, his teammates, you know, your Timothy Rasmus, he would set him up. He would set up, uh, you know, Temba Zwani to score. If uh, he's not in that uh, position to score, but he would give it to the other guys. Yeah. And again, you know, his character, 
We yeah. always said, you know, we all like a, a, a celebration whereby we <laughs> jump over <laughs> the board. I mean, the coach, the coach has to make peace about it. I mean, the last time we had a chat, I mean, I do remember we spoke about it that, you know, the coaches were concerned about his health because of this jumping around and right. jumping over the boards. They seem like they've just got over it by now, eh? Yeah, no, definitely because, uh, you know, you can't, you can't control somebody else. If he's feeling excited, you can't tell me how to be happy. You know, no, maybe, maybe, maybe don't, don't try. It's impossible, you know. So for yeah. him, I think he tried to uh, do that, but now he, uh, instead of jumping over the perimeter board or the advertising perimeter boards, then instead he went to the corner line and, yeah. uh, you know, he sort of uh, kneeled or whatever he was doing. But, uh, you know, that's, that's the kind of person he is. Yeah. So I think it's worth it, uh, I mean, uh, for the football of the year. I mean, the football of the year is chosen by. Uh, you know, um, a, a certain top uh, judging panel, mm. and as for the players' player, you know, it's uh, chosen by uh, the players themselves. So yeah. even the players, they realize that no, I mean, no one was better than him. Yeah, yeah, definitely, no one was better than him. And speaking about knowing, I mean, we 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 have a, there's, there's a bit of a conversation about who deserved it more, and we're talking here about the coaches, right? That we're talking about uh, Benny McCarthy. He picked up the accolade of coach of the season. But a lot of people are saying, well, it, it should have went to Mandan Likazi because he had much less resources at Golden Arrows. And some are saying it, it, it was deserved by Mangalere Sandals because they won the league. What is your thoughts on this situation? Look, I mean, as part of uh, the, 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 the panelists, you know, or should I say, like part of the judging panels for uh, the PSL Awards, but I was not involved in the coaching one. However, uh, I understand, you know, where our, 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 our my fellow colleagues, you know, they were coming from. Mm. How it works is that we've got uh, rules, you know, you are, gu- you are guided by a certain uh, rules that you've got to follow. And I'm sure that my fellow uh, panelists as well, they did the same. But now, talking about the uh, Mandat Ligas, I think he's done exceptionally well as well. But now, you look at the team where currently is, and you look at uh, the number of matches that they've lost. And uh, you also look at, uh, you know, the number of uh, red cards that the team has received as well. Yeah. You know, it definitely counts. However, again, Benny McCarthy, you know, uh, um, with uh, the resources as well that he's got, mm-hmm. and uh, he managed to, uh, you know, stay at uh, position number two, you know, for quite some time. And uh, Benny McCarthy is an upstart, if I may to say that, yeah. you know, in terms of uh, coaching, as, as compared to Mandan Ligas, who's always been in the game, you know, he's gone to Maritzburg, he's been all over, even at Amazon itself. So, and, uh, you know, um, um, Mangova as well as uh, Ulani, yeah. you know, the, uh, they've got all the resources. So, I mean, they have number of Santos players, they can win the game, even without a coach in front of them because it's a quality team. Yeah. And th- there's no way, there's no rule that says, you know, um, uh, the, the coach of the season must go to uh, the, 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 the coach who won the league. Yeah. I mean, there's no such a rule. Even, you know, somebody else who's at number five can still win it, depending yeah. on you know, the, the, the guidance, you know, by the uh, rules of the PSL. So people are entitled to their own opinions. Yeah. Everybody can, uh, you know, share their own opinions. But the fact of the matter is, uh, the judging panelists, you know, they were guided by certain uh, directives and uh, they went by that. That's when uh, Benny McCarthy has uh, won the uh, coach of the year. Well, I think he deserved it. Personally, I think I think Ben McCarthy really did deserve to get that award. But let's stick to this uh, KZN conversation because we're still in the KZN region. And earlier on in the season, I mean, Sandy Luzungu took over Amazulu you know, at the beginning of the season. And he said that, you know, when Ben McCarthy signed in, he said he wanted a top four finish, right? And not only did he want that, he wanted KZN football to dominate South African football. I mean, it's looking likely we've got uh, Sigugune, uh, not Sigugune rather, but uh, Richards Bay and um, and uh, and uh, Royal AM knocking on the PSL door. Do you think it's likely that in a couple of seasons we might see uh, a KZN team probably dominating the PSL? It's 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 it's, it's refreshing, honestly speaking, you know, to see uh, certain teams, especially from KZN, dominating. And no one thought, you know, Amazon would finish where they are because they've really looked in history. They are only history of uh, about. You know, so many years, yeah. but uh, um, you know, things change. You know, I mean, uh, and now a bigger question could be that: is the PSL going down or is the PSL uh, going up? But now it's a matter of uh, head and tail. Yeah. However, from uh, <laughs> like where I'm seated, I mean, I think it's a matter of uh, you know uh, the PSL having uh, or PSL teams improving, yeah. Yeah. you know, challenging teams yeah. that they thought initially 
that uh, they were the uh, the big ones. I mean, uh, you look at Kim the Chiefs. I mean, uh, they went into the top eight in the last game. So um, Amazulu, KZM teams. I think uh, next season we'll see the best out of it because of uh, you know Mema Tomatala, the uh, chair, chair lady of uh, Golden Heroes. She's away. I mean, uh, what happened at Amazulu? Then she would like to compete. I'm sure that she's gonna add in more resources to the team. And Mandan Niggas, I mean, they wouldn't like to be beaten by Benny McCarthy next season. The competition is tight. And look at. Uh, uh, Royal AM, I mean, uh, if they are crowned champions, then they would be the third KZN or the fourth KZN yeah. team, you know, after my respect, you know, so now it's going to be hectic and, uh, you know, this uh, is the challenge, you know, to other provinces as well, because Houghton has been dominant and now uh, other provinces are doing well, I mean, it's unfortunate that Black Leopards now has been relegated in Limpopo, but yeah. Limpopo was another province that was doing exceptionally well as well. Yeah, but at least we've got TTM coming out of Limpopo right now. They still have a representative in there. But speaking of, uh, speaking of, we, we come back to this Royal AM situation and uh, we want to know exactly what is going on in, in the courts. I mean, there is, uh, you know, that arbitration that gave uh, Sigukuni the three points, which uh, they rightfully deserved uh, because of the situation that happened earlier on this year with Polokwadi uh, City. But uh, the three points weren't awarded and now we are here with uncertainty of who is the champion of the NFD. What is currently going on? Where do we stand right now with that situation? Look, I think probably by the end of this week we should know uh, or we should get uh, the uh, outcome. But now remember, in football rules, uh, you know, which I think uh, all the, 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 the teams are subscribing to, mm. uh, uh, the arbitrator's, de arbitrator's decision is final. That's what it says. And now the arbitrator ruled in favor of uh, Sikukuni FC. Uh, or Sikukuni United, and now uh, with Sikukuni being given the three points, um, it's surprising now that uh, you know the PSL is challenging that, and they yeah. say no, 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 it doesn't have to be like that because remember initially, um, the PSL DC ruled that the, the points will be taken away from Borukwadi City, who by then you know feel that, uh, uh, or I mean, they went to the game without uh, having five. Uh, under 23 players, and of which uh, it's against the PSL rules, and now the PSL DC decided to. Uh, find them guilty and they took the points away from them and now the question was where do you take these points to and uh, I mean are they just going to be going back to uh, the PSL head offices in uh, Johannesburg or what's going to happen to the point and uh, so could argue that I mean uh, we played the game we were there we honored we, we lost the protest in time so we should be giving the game because it should be a walk over uh, because these guys I mean uh, they uh, failed the rules and now um, the the Skukuni uh, management, they took the matter to, uh, for arbitration and the arbitrator, it, it's an independent person, mm. you know, who relies on uh, the football rules and he went by that and he, he didn't like go with the, the, uh, the precedents that were set by uh, the PSF mm. or the former, you know, arbitrators, I mean, they went according to the rules and now the rules say the point should be given to the other team and yeah. that's what he did, he took the points away and now with this, then the Polokwane City surprisingly, you know, they challenged this. Going because, to court. <laughs> yeah, to me, to me, I don't think uh, Royal AM has got uh, a say in this one because, I mean, much as it affects them on the law mm. at the top, but now it doesn't, uh, they've got nothing to do with it. You know, they can't be losing any, uh, you know, appeal or anything yeah. like that. And another twist or an interesting factor, you know, to this whole uh, uh, situation is that, uh, you know, the, uh, Polokwane City are the ones, you know, who came and appealed and said, no, you couldn't, you can't give these guys three points. But why? Right. Because already you've already lost the points. Then yeah. Why do you need to complain? So but that's what it is. And now <laughs> my problem with the whole thing is that the PSL DC should be found uh, the ones who were uh, at fault because mm. this matter happened in January. Mm. And mm. now uh, by then it was not affecting any team or it was not affecting uh, the lock table, but now uh, the, the decision could have been taken in January or February, I mean, and uh, if appeals then by then it would be sorted. But now yeah. we're sitting here towards the end of the season, then. That's the problem. I think I think I think the P, the PSL were very incompetent by not you know handling this matter a lot earlier than it should have been. I mean, it should have been their duty to make sure that things are run rightly, correctly in in terms of the league. But it wasn't the point. That how does this taint the image of South African football? I mean, all of this is happening. How does it taint the image of South African football from an outsider? Look, this thing it's happening every year, and uh, we 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 see the very same problem of uh, having. PSL teams uh, or NFT teams, you know, struggling when it comes to uh, going to the PSL, we're always having such issues. Mm. And of which I think the PSL must deal with it. And now the best way to deal with such things is to ensure that uh, they 
uh, like the decisions, like when a team appeals, like the DC must sit within days just to sort that matter out so that it should, you know, exacerbate the situation. You leave yeah. it for two, three months. Mm. Then uh, when you deal with it by then, then it's got uh, some ripple effects like it is doing now. You know, I'm uh, Royal AM are now affected by this. And now Sikukuni, you know, they believe they should have been giving these points a long time ago. So, I mean, uh, by then, if they were giving those points a long time ago, then Royal AM, yeah. they should have known what to do and, uh, you know, for them to win uh, the PSF, the Clear Africa Championship title. So now, it's a matter of uh, just uh, putting, pointing the finger yeah. at, uh, you know, the PSL DC. Uh, we're slightly running out of time right now, Mr. Better, but I want I want us to conclude this conversation of the NFD. When can we expect a final decision, and when can we expect the playoffs to kick off? As far as I'm concerned, the PSL was supposed to uh, the playoffs were supposed to uh, kick off on the 15th of uh, this month, and I'm sure that maybe if uh, a decision is taken by the end of this week, then uh, we could see you know the playoff uh, taking place you know from the 15th, and of which is not going to be easy. Remember, I mean, uh, you remember me as well, you know, because I, 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 I think whatever decision that comes in, then there would be an appeal, you know, coming from there. Because currently, I think there are judges who are involved and who would be going to. Remember, judges, they deal with evidence in front of them. Don't yeah. tell me that that team in 1987, this happened. And <laughs> so, you know, what are they saying? And yeah. that's it. So, but I'm sure that there will be a lot of appeals because we are talking about people who've got money here. Yeah. Royal AM owners, they've got money. Stukun FC, they've got money as well. So for you and me, just to wait and see and uh, you know, report about the matters. Hi, we'll have to wait and see, Mr. Feta, what happens there. But let's go back to the conversation before you round up this conversation. I want to I wanna, I wanna talk about that Pito Musimani situation. Where are we standing right now? I mean, uh, we, we did hear that, uh, you know, the wife of uh, Pito Musimani, her company uh, owes more than Sundowns about 8 million rand. What is the current situation there? <laughs> Look, uh, <clears throat> since uh, Mamluk Sundowns they went to the high court, uh, we're still waiting for a date, mm -hmm. you know, for them to uh, settle this matter. But now, being me, you know, as a journalist, um, I know that this matter won't go that far because Petrus Motsipe, I don't think he realizes that I mean, he's the camp president that this matter is affecting his uh, image okay, as well. Yeah. That yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, it's a, you know, it's a, a Petrus Motsipe team. I mean, we don't care. I mean, his son might be there, so people, but it's a Petrus Motsipe team. Yeah. So now I suspect that Petrus Motsipe is going to tell his people just to cancel this whole thing because it's only. Eight million rents for Peter <laughs> Paul. <laughs> only, only eight million. <laughs> <I'm so fat. laughs> <laughs> it's still a whole lot of money. I mean, I understand why uh, you know Mamelodi really Sundowns are still upset about the situation. But let's round off the conversation. Um, Kaiser Chiefs, they're currently in the last four of uh, CAF. They don't have a coach as yet. Who should come in? Uh, who is expected to come in? Uh, and are they? Do they stand a chance to actually make it past this uh, last four? Um, I'm sure. I'm sure they've got uh, you know those chances because they remain the only team in the Champions League. But now we're looking at uh, maybe Stuart Baxter could be the guy who stepped in. You know, as uh, speculated in the media, um, throughout because we broke the story as well. But now um, for Kansas Chiefs, I think they need a quality coach. And now they've got uh, Mulifinzeki who deals who specializes with development. And Stuart Baxter is the guy who deals with uh, you know the senior players. He wants the results now. So I think they would make uh, a good combination. And, I mean, but now my problem is, uh, you know, always going back to uh, the coaches who employ Scott Baxter, he goes and next day we hire him again. Yeah, so let's hope that uh, maybe Scott Baxter will be the man. Right, we'll have to wait and see what happens in terms of Kaiser Chiefs. And hopefully they can make it into that last four. I mean, it's a tough encounter against Widat, but all the best to them, rather. And uh, Mr. Petter, let's round it up. Uh, where can uh, our viewers find you in terms of social media handles? I'm um, on Twitter, it's Matthew Sumpeta, as well as on Instagram and Facebook as well. I'm just using my name. Matthew's one T, don't do double T. How, 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 how did you get there? Like, is, is, was it you decided we're going to fuck one T or your parents like, nah, we're going to make this a special Matthew and not put the other T? Uh, hope my face. Hope my face, really? <laughs> Thank what you very much. <laughs> From what, from, what I, from what I understand, you know, um, normally the Matthews with double T, it's a surname. Oh, okay. And uh, the Matthews with one T, it's a first name, like oh, myself. okay. All right, all right. Well, thank you very much for clarifying that, Mr. Bette. Thank you for joining us as well. We hope to hear from you very soon. Uh, we did not manage to get through all the conversations we wanted to have in terms of the game or in terms of the, 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 the questions we had lined up. But thank you very much for the information you've given us today. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation again. Thanks. Right. See you soon, Mr. Bette.
Thank well, you. that was our conversation with uh, Mr. Matthews Mbete here on Super TV. Channel 150 Open Video Decoder. Stick around because we've still got more international football we're going to be talking about. Yeah, that's me now. I hope uh, you have enjoyed uh, this episode that I have with uh, more sport and uh, more of such, you know, will be coming on our Facebook uh, um, and uh, Twitter as well as uh, on YouTube. It's uh, Matthew Simpert, even on YouTube. Please subscribe and uh, also like our pages. You can share them, you know, with your friends. Thank you very much. Ta-da. <laughs>